In this episode of Mighty Car Mods, we are working on Twisted and we're getting it banging again, people. Boom, 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 boom. Welcome to another episode of Mighty Car Mods. By now, you would have seen the best vehicle that we've ever had on this show. No, Which is, of vehicle. course, uh, Twisted. It's a sex spec uh, Evo from the Auto Salon era. As you can see, it's absolutely incredible. Evo engine inside. Uh, we've done a full service on it. Um, look at it go. It's full of Castrol Edge fluids, a new Century battery. Um, the car's an absolute boss. It's now running a Haltech ECU to make everything run. And while that's all very exciting, I haven't plugged that in yet. Did Wait, you forget something? No. Um, I was just waiting till last. Um, <laughs> but it's not a sex spec show car if it doesn't have a thump and stereo. Now, the car does appear to have a stereo in it, except none of it actually works. Come with me. I'll show you what's going on on the inside because today we're getting this car... Oh, we're getting the stereo working again. So over here, it's, um, it comes with this head unit, which doesn't even have um, Bluetooth or USB, um, and we don't have a CD, so I think that was just stuck in there to try and sell the car. Um, behind here, there is a bunch of just random wiring that we're going to try and make work. We did find this old um, head unit um, up on our shelves up there, which was out of Marty's Gemini or something, we think, possibly. <laughs> um, but it's got Bluetooth and it's got USB, which means we can put some sound through it. Now, today, we're not kind of rewiring the whole car because we don't know what's in there, what's not in there. But what we are going to do is we're just going to make sure everything actually works. We want to hear sound pumping out of every speaker, every tweeter, maybe see if we get some downlights going. And most importantly, we need to get these massive subs working in the back. Now, here, um, it's the Sony Explode. I mean, it's just era specific, really, um, and um, period correct. Uh, nothing is plugged into this, but I can see around this mount here, which I will remove, there is a bunch of wiring and stuff down there. So, today, we're going to investigate it. Um, no doubt there may be some contraband under here, but we're going to have a look inside and see what's in there. And we're just going to get the car... Uh, the car stereo working. Of course, this episode, we're going full disrespected nose style, so prepare to get your nose disrespected. There's minimal editing, no music, and no voiceover. When you're installing a head unit, the first thing you need to do is jack up your car. I'm just tricking you. I was about to jack it up off the rear diff, but we're not doing any performance mods on this Evo today, are we, people? It's all about the stereo. Martin is our stereo whisperer, of course. The very first episode of Mighty Car Mods all those years ago um, was uh, my little $500 Daihatsu, and we put a head unit in it. Do you remember, Martin? Do you remember how little and innocent we were? I'll never forget, man. I had, I had a brown hat and so much hair under that hat. And <laughs> that I, I is not a, there today. A weird, like, half green beanie thing. But this is like, this is like Marty in his element now working on stereos. I love stereos, um, man. They're which, awesome. Which is awesome. Martin, are we going to run, like, batteries down here, like, proper show car spec? Or are we <laughs> just going to leave it up there? Nah, man. I We're... think the original owner got in touch on Facebook and said that he never had the battery in the bonnet. Like, I don't know about like, you. Under but... the bonnet is meant to be back here somewhere. I don't know about you, but I like my car stereos portable. Otherwise, why bother having them in a car? So maybe we should make this stereo portable. Yeah. Make it work. Anyway, Martin, I'm going to do a flip. Now we're going to get going. Are you ready? See, I flipped all the way over with the magic of editing. Let's go, Martin. Let's get to it. So I think sometimes when you buy a new slash old car, um, there's, there's always just that history, isn't there, where you just don't quite know what's going on. Now, um, Scotty Tuning Fork, I heard him refer to this as a stereo car multiple times. Um, because I believe back in the day, in Auto Salon day, you sort of had like the performance cuts. Well, you, you didn't really. You mostly just had stereo cars, body kits, big stuff like that. So a stereo was a big part. You were judged on it. They yep. also had sound off competitions. This, it was part of the, just to make it very clear to everybody, because you probably are wondering what's going on. It was part of the point scoring system. It was. There was a certain like thing where you go, cool, what's your stereo? What's your performance? What's your paint? What's your interior? And all of these things would add up. Um, and let you know who would win the ultimate panty dropping competition of all that was auto salon in the 2000s. That's right. Know, so having as, this engine, we were. having this engine ticked a box because it's like okay, it's got an engine swap, and then having everything painted, having all this shaved stuff, like you know, none of the bracketry, and it, it's like you put way more effort in the shaved. And oh, a, sorry. Yes. Yeah, shaved, um, shaved bonnet bay, shaved bay. Yep. Um, 
And then on top of that, you also had the stereo. Now, this, I, can't, I don't know where the wiring for it is. I mean, I think you said it's dangling out of the, the back, didn't you? No, I mean, th there, was, there was a bunch of stuff on here before yeah. that I pulled off, but it wasn't actually connected to anything. So none of that is actually connected to anything of any consequence. And usually you go from your positive terminal into a fuse box, but from what I can tell, and I had a bit of a look under here, I don't know if you can see this, maybe I'm, I'm going to cast some light on the situation because this, this just raises big question marks for me. Like, look at this. Can you see this thing? That's the fuse box, dude. Yeah. That's the main distribution block for the whole car. Um, just sort of jammed up there and gaffer taped and then cable tied and, and chopped off. It actually um, looks like a pack of illegally imported goods, doesn't what it? Is, what is that? Is that? Is someone put fuel hose over the wiring? Is that what we're looking at there? It, not, looks like that sure, it's, it looks like that there's wiring through there, but it's going through fuel hose to insulate it. Because I can't figure any other reason why that would be like that. So possibly, and again, we've got more wiring down here, fans that aren't plugged in. So possibly there is a power wire going from this battery to the back to power our stereo, but it's also very possible that there isn't. Well, uh, the reason I don't think there is, Martin, is because, because the guy who built it in the first place said there was never a battery in the front. I don't think anyone's gone to the effort of actually wiring the stereo. Like, why would anyone no. waste their time with it? Yeah. Other than me. <laughs> whoop, whoop, whoop. So what and we, you. So what we probably, I mean, I reckon if we can get power to the back of the car, to that amp, and power to that head unit, yeah. um, I reckon there's a really good chance it'll work. Yeah. But, because I, I think the RCA... But that's assuming that there. there's actually wiring in the car already. Now, there are some RCAs hanging out in between yeah. there. I think the first thing we need to do is we Dig need to out. get the boot open and yep. get as much access as we can. Yep. Get rid of any of the drug money in there and just see what the wiring situation Dude, is. Dude, we might find money in there that pays for the stereo. Imagine, there could be thousands of dollars in there. Why would anyone leave thousands of dollars in the car? Because they were hiding it. Either that or we're calling the police and yeah. letting them know that we've just found something a little bit suspect. So this video just stops abruptly, it's because we had to call the cops. Yeah. So back here we've got a couple of tech screws that are holding in just a little bit of strapping. And this strapping is holding in this MDF mount that was obviously made to hold in the sub. What's incredible is that Nobody was using like a carby or anything back then to do this. Like people are just like measuring it all up properly. And you'd think like with a lot of the time when you're doing this kind of work, maybe you have some patterns that you use over and over. But the thing is with show cars, everyone's going to be different, aren't they? So it's like each thing is bespoke. And that's why there's, um, there really is just so much work and so much money goes into these cars. All right, so this here... Well, this, this stereo would have been someone's life for weeks. They're probably done at the interior, with the interior at the same time, I would imagine. So, and a lot of yeah, a lot of MDF, a lot of fiberglass, a lot of you know, hand skills. Is it still attached to something? No, it's just um, unless it's got some double sided tape or something underneath it. That's not attached to anything in there. <laughs> Here, we, Here go. we go. First piece gone. Look at that. Kind of looks like an ant's head, doesn't it? And it says on it, right box. I hope, I hope that's what happened for him. Live a happily life after. Yeah, so is this is just. To? I think there's just a couple of um, screws that just go down through the carpet. Over here. One more over here. I think they've just used wood screws to attach this to the carpet. It's very odd. It's one way to stop it moving around. That one's not attached to, to anything. Yeah, and you know what this is telling us as well? There we go. Is that, like, that sort of is a little bit of a giveaway, is that the fuse, the fuse holder, unless that's been put in incorrectly, well, actually, the fuse is supposed to go as close to the battery as you can get it, but that appears to be near the back. But that, that's because of this down here, Marty. We've got a big earth wire, which is good. See, that's because of this. So I reckon it's probably... Yeah, it's possible that no power has ever run from the front of the car oh. to the back. It's just run directly oh, from that, here. And that's what was supposed to get plugged into it. Like that's what's meant to get plugged battery. into like an external static battery so that you can like pump all your lights and everything at, oh, the, wow. at the show. Are they all... So they've got to be all earth points then because it's all going back to the terminal. But then why is... Right, okay, yeah, so that goes to a negative side of, an ex of a separate battery to complete the circuit, but where are the power wires? Somewhere else. Is, yeah, I don't know, man. We're going to work it out. We're going to work it out. Cool. Well, we've got a starting point at least because we can get power to that amp relatively easily. Yeah. 
you just kick the camera in the face. Sorry, mate. Do you reckon that is an earthing point? That's connected to this. I reckon everything connected to that dangly thing is supposed to be earth, but I reckon that in your other hand was supposed to go to the power. And yeah. they are speaker wires that come from the sub subs? No, maybe not. And they come from the amp? To the speakers. To the speakers. And that See, I don't know, you look at that and you look like you kind of got a positive yeah. and a negative, don't you? But where's this go? Does that go know. down underneath as well? I mean, I'm never really going to know unless we kind of start pulling this apart, which I don't really want to do. See, what we really need in here is we need the, the speaker wires that come off these. Yeah. As long as we have that, we can organise our own power. We can BYO power, no worries. Yep. Yeah. You know what we could do just to make sure this works is... We could just bring a battery pack over here and just try and get power. Oh no, because then, we, yeah. It would, it would tell us if the amp works. We can definitely bench yeah, test Yeah, I mean, we can definitely just do that. But then what you're saying is that we don't know where the wires for these are, unless it's these. I hope it is because it, looks like, you can't, it looks like you can't get these out without removing the entire thing. But we've got to get wires probably forward if to run the um, front speakers back from I mean, here. We can, I'm, how many I'm, channels is this thing? I'm confident that we can do that. But Oh, that's just for the subs. I wonder if there's another amp for the other speakers. Or they would just run off the head unit. You wouldn't think they'd run them off a head unit for a show car, would you? No, man. I never built a show car before. Oh, yes, we did. Okay, so this is what we've discovered so far. We've got down here a power and and earth, we think RCA's stereo, which we hope go down to the centre console where the head unit is, and then two sets of speaker wires, and hopefully these ones go to the subs. Then all we're going to need to do is power the speakers inside the car, which for now, Marty, we can just do off the head unit. Yeah. And then that's, that's what we got. Yeah. What, what's, what's the plan? So game plan, the other good news is that the RCAs are here because what we really don't want to do is pull out all this rear stuff because that may never go back in again. Exactly. And look at look at the workmanship. I mean, you, seriously, you you just you don't want to mess with that. And um, but what we've also got here is some RCAs. So if we're lucky, we'll find the other end of these RCAs up the front of the car, and we just grab a multimeter, put it on continuity, get a long bit of wire, and buzz them out and see if they are. Um, See, they're the, the ones that show up at the front. If they are, that's good. Then all we have to do is get a power wire from the battery at the front back here and an earth point we've already got. So that should just work. Yeah, cool. Assuming that the amp isn't busted and if it is, we'll have to put a different amp in. I reckon the subs will be fine though. Like those things last forever as long as they're not actually blown with too much maximum bass through them. You hear that? What is it? That's the sound of another amp. Another under, one? Under the passenger seat. Oh! So you got another 10 kilos slowing you down. Just found some more wiring up here in the boot. That's for the downlights, Yeah, man. but they use speaker wiring. <laughs> if you've got it. Um, so. Oops. Oops. It's going to take out all our interior bits. Lay them out very carefully. Do you remember when we laid out all the interior of Too Sexy over here? Remember Vaguely. when we really carefully removed it? Yeah. That was pretty careful, man. I think... Um, there's definitely an amp under this seat. Should we just take this seat out? We might have to. It's a two. It's a two-channel amp. Oh, dude! If this if this amp works, we might be in luck. Oh, there's more RCAs underneath, yeah, man. There. There's more RCAs underneath. Can you see it? No. Um, but yeah, we're not we're not getting to anything without this with this seat in the way. Time to DAC, Martin. Get your DAC on. You know in Australia, to DAC yourself um, means to go for a run in the rain? No, it doesn't. DAC yourself means DAC someone, like pull their pants down. Does like, it? Get your DACs off. Yeah, you're getting DAC'd. I lots of people running probably, in the rain. Lots of people probably have like bad memories of being DAC'd at school. Oh, really? I got DAC'd once. I was in primary school. We used to wear trackies. And then some dude, some dude, he was a bit of a dickhead, just like ran up behind me and just DAC'd me in front of the whole school. My brothers used to like hold me in the toilet if I like push me down so my bum went right in there and then they'd flush it. <laughs> really? Yeah, it really sucked. <laughs> I'll get them back one day. <laughs> I, I'm scared to think of how because 
you'd need a pretty big toilet, man, to fit like a full-size grown adult. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know that it would work. This seat is going to weigh so much, isn't it? Probably. There's probably, I'm pretty sure there's a Bunnings bolt in the other side of it too, so that's no doubt not going to fit your whizzer. There's one right at the back over there. Is. Oh, is that a Bunnings bolt? I don't know, they're just, you know. They're all different? All different. I'm just going to put them on our delightful roof up there. Okay, Martin, the seat's coming out. This is automotive archaeology at its finest right now. Yeah, man. Because who knows what is going to be underneath there. Well, there might be an amp that works. Oh, yep. That was cross-threaded. That just got jammed home. Oh, that's heavy. Do you know why it's heavy too? Because it's the passenger seat? Yep. And that's... Yep. Okay. Thought so. I thought that's what you meant, but I was just making sure. All right, well, under here we found not much, actually. That whole panel lifts up, man, so we should be able to get underneath it. Like, look at the detail. Someone built a panel for underneath the seat to put the amps in to cover all the amp wiring. Hey, Martin, this didn't come out, but the seat still came out. Did it snap off? Oh, my God, it was holding with, it was holding with tech screws, man. Oh, yeah, the tech screws holding you just, the You literally just pulled it out. Yeah, no, it's like this wasn't actually, because that wasn't <laughs> attached. Far out. Good. Super safe. All right. What's underneath, Martin? I don't know. Let's find Are we out. find something awesome? After the break. Why are you playing with this man? Just sorry. do the thing. Well, there's wiring. And there's and a power wire. There Where is that going? There is an extension. Go? Well, that power wire would be Oh, going. that is the extension. To the back. Happy days. So we need to buzz out and work out which buzz one of those. Out. So this here is going Front to... Front speakers, man, for sure. Rear speakers, this way. Oh, yeah, okay. Oh, front maybe speakers. the maybe the fronts were supposed to dump been off the head unit and the no, rear would dump are... the amp. How many channels is on that thing? It's only two channels. There's only left and right. How many wires coming off? Four or eight? No, except they. I think they've um they've put two into each. So front and rear. So they've bridged it. Do you reckon Schneider are still around, Martin? I don't know, but they were sort of good amps. I think they were reasonably good. I can't quite remember. I had a Schneider something. I think it was a crossover. A, a crossover is uh, where you decide what frequency you want to let through, like whether it's a low pass filter or a high pass filter, but a crossover is actually sending them both out so that you can send one one way and one the other way, as opposed to just a low pass, high pass or a band pass, which is letting specific frequencies through. A crossover is splitting it so you can send them different places. So you can send your low frequencies to your subs and then not use all the low power uh, going to like smaller speakers that would never actually be able to run that much power anyway, so it just fills them up with woof, uh, where you don't need that. So you find out what your lowest cutoff is of your speakers, then set your crossover so it's the same, and then you're not sending frequencies to the speakers that couldn't be reproduced to your ear hole anyway. Okay, Martin. Found it. Um, let's buzz this out. And buzz it out, power it up, do a skid, I mean, do a... Do, a, do a sub, do whatever a, a sub off. skid's called. Do a sound off. I just want to clarify that the passenger seat was held in with tech screws. Super safe. How do you put that much effort into everything and then hold a seat in with tech screws? Because it probably broke the night before a show. How did it break? Dude, you, oh, know, you know how it broke. Sorry, I'm, I keep forgetting this is the sex spec era. Show car, man. Uh, tell me when to touch the tips, Martin. They called it sex spec for a reason. They did. All right, I'm going to put the negative of my multimeter on one tip and the positive on the other and if you touch them together yep means we've got the right one tell me when go i'm touching the tips i'm going to try the other ones are yep. you ready tell me when yep yeah dude we have sub we need awesome. to label it Do you have um, a yeah i'll get some um i'll get some tape and we'll label it up so we know what goes where Awesome. Dude, yeah. this, is the, this is the best. Would this you be upset if I told you that I was just as excited about the stereo as I am about the whole rest of the vehicle? Would you be upset? No, because I'm excited about the stereo. Are it's, you? Like, it's full custom, dude. Like, these the door cards have been designed to make these speakers fit because these normally come with little crappy four-inch... Like, the stereos that came in these cars at this era were crap. Yeah. So yeah. the amount of improvement you got was just... Enormous. I'm, I'm pumped to hear it, man. 
Well, I've, I always saw these cars driving around when I lived in Parramatta. I would always see them going up Church Street and I had a 180, so I was interested in actually like performance and going fast. But a lot of the other people weren't. And so I would see these cars driving around and I always, at the time, I was never into it. And I guess I still kind of aren't. Uh, except to actually experience it and now own one, yeah. like is going to be awesome. Because can you imagine when we hit the streets and we're rolling like some Team Evo songs in this and everyone's going to think we're awesome? Yep. George Street, yep. Friday night. Yep. All the people in their supercars are going to be like going, man, they're just, they're just slipping over all over the place. Amazing. Subs. Um, so then... Let's do the same for the front. The same for these ones? Yep. Yeah, cool. Yeah, dude. Awesome. So that's and front. so they're the ones that are coming from the head unit. That's front. And that's all we've got. So we know that's front. We've got the subs labelled. The only other thing that those amps need is they need their signal wire to tell them when to turn on. Yeah. Now, a lot of the time, these are on, like, some of these um, RCAs come with a wire up the centre, but these ones don't have it. Yeah. Which means one of this rat's nest of wires will probably be our remote wire. Would they have made the colour the same, though? Nah. Do you reckon? I don't know, but that's... Oh, hang on. There's a... There's some dodgy-looking wires here but if we buzz those out there's a remote wire like the only other wire here other than power that is a navy blue wire that looks like a really uh, light gauge and i reckon that's the signal wire for the boot sub right so we'll need to run a, a long wire from the front of the car to the back yeah um to complete that circuit and then do the same thing. And if that buzzes out, the amps will turn on once they've got power and ground. Yeah, no So worries. we've got to do it from up here. Because regardless of what head unit we put in, we have to put a signal wire in to turn yeah. the amps on. I reckon it is. It's going to be one of these. It's usually a blue, so it could be that. Um, but that also see looks that like one a that's power been cut? That's what kind of colour it is in the boot. And see, it's been cut in the back that of one's, the One of them's going into the factory loom. And these... Yeah, so a lot of the time what people do is they'll, rev they'll use the factory wiring to go into the doors yeah because they don't want to have to pull wires don't through the doors apart, you're yeah. supposed to pull wires through the doors if you've got high power splits but a lot of the time people don't bother yeah so what's most likely is that's going to be our front speakers and then we're going to have also a second wire that someone has had to run down the car which is going to be near somewhere yeah i reckon it's probably that maybe anyway if we if we grab a long bit of wire and yeah we just then we're going to just buzz it out and buzz see until we find it right, so here's our long bit of wire you can just use any any gauge doesn't matter. Most cars are like four to five meters long, so if you get a long enough bit, we'll be able to run that from the front where the, all the wiring is for the head unit to the back stereo and also the front, and we sort of use that to complete our circuit for a multimeter. That's essentially like extending the negative side of our multimeter or the, the black um, probe on our multimeter so it gets around to the back of the car. This is like one of those movies, man, where they're like, you know, probing stuff and trying not to blow shit up. Where's this go? What is going on? This has had a few different stereos in it too, you can tell. Like it's had a few different head units through it and a few You reckon? And every single time it's been done, it's just been slightly mangled. Martin, um, I, I don't know if it's Flash Gordon or one of those movies, but I'm going for it, man. I'm putting my arm in and I'm just feeling around where I can't see. Really? Yeah, I'm, I'm currently, I'm elbow deep inside it right now. Oh, really? And um. There's heaps of hair in there. Yeah. There's some soft stuff dangling down that I don't know what it feels like it might be um, that uh, wrap that you put around wiring. Those seals on the boots never seal properly too, so I'm, I've no doubt it's very moist in there. It will, it, there's been a lot of moisture in here because just below the gooch where all the hair is, it yeah. looks like there's been lots of liquid and stuff that's now dried all over it. So have you got that extension that we made like I'm, I'm holding it on right now. It's connected. All right, so I've just got to find the remote wire. I'm going around the other side. Man, I don't know if this is ever... Oh, dude! That's it. We've got it. Got it? Yep. So we just need to bring your remote wire around the front. We'll see if it triggers this amp as well. What colour was it? Um, blue in the back. What colour have you got over here? It changes colour a few times, but there's, it seems to be blue here, but there's also a mystery green one that runs down there that I think that's some kind of constant power. All we need is this remote wire, a constant power to the head unit, a switch power to the head unit that turns the entire system on, and the RCAs, and power to the amp. And that because be... the speakers should already be wired up to the amp, like it looks I like they think, are. I don't think the speakers are wired up here. I, I was saying before that these often get looped around, but this was just taped up. You couldn't really tell where it was going. Yeah. So I think possibly once upon a time they were connected to the head unit, and maybe they're not anymore, but we'll be able to find this out as well using another trick. Um, to see if there's any sort of continuity between 
along across the coil of the speaker. So if we do that and that, positive nah, is nothing. So hopefully those speakers are wired directly to this amp. Yeah. If they are, um, we're in luck because that all that circuits will be complete. If not, and they've been pulled out of here, then we've got more work to do because um, we might be chasing factory wiring. It's also possible as well, Marty, that because this has got a different head unit in it now, these speakers may not be the original ones that were in it while it was doing the show scene. Yeah, you know the, tweeters, I mean? the tweeters look a bit not stand like all of it looks a little bit kind of how you're going so potentially these could have just been stuck in and they're not even wired in from behind so what i might do actually just for myself is i might actually just pull one of these out well that'll tell and us have a look away. and see what's going on behind it yeah we can buzz them out also see the other thing as well there's only um three of these screws holding this in place <laughs> which you know for a show car that's also not ideal Let's see. No, they're connected. And there they go. Is there a crossover in there? There's a little crossover by the looks of things. And then does it go to speaker wire or factory looking wire? It goes to down here. Quite a bit of wiring in there actually. Um, it just goes to these. What we probably can do is buzz that circuit out. Yeah, I can take these way. off. Yeah. Hold them together. Let's do that. And we buzz them. Yep. So if we put that on continuity, which is that one, which means when you put this and this together, so... So I'm holding these together now. You're holding them, and I should be able to just put, like we just go across this amp until we find the right one. So if you take one of those, yep. and I'll take that. Do you want me to put the camera on a tripod? Um, no, man, I got this. I can't actually see. Oh, no, you do that, I'll do this. Uh, and this? You do, if you just do the red or black one, just pick one. Yeah, um, just one at a time, yep. and then I'll do this. What colour are you on? Red. Now go to black. Oh. Oh, okay. Yeah, there's internal circuitry in the amp that means that's giving us sort of a false reading. But okay. it is connected to something. Yeah. So that's right. probably going to work, you know. That's a good start. Martin, I reckon we just go for it. send it. Just send it. There you go, man. Oh. Dude, what? This, this had different number plates. What do you mean? This car was not always twisted. Mm, does yes, that just was. does that just mess with it your head? It was always twisted. Don't I just found its rego sticker from 2011. From 2011. Are you ready? Yeah. That's a big reveal. Yeah. Show me what is it? Eyes off, bro. Eyes off. Eyes off. Oh. No! I, I don't know how I feel about well, that. It also says it's a Lancer. Why does it say it's a Lancer? It should say EVO C92B. It? it should say EVO. But eyes off, dude. Oh, wow. Someone was rolling around with the number plates eyes off. Uh, it's, it's eyes off, technically. Oh, maybe his name was eyes off. Eyes off? Like a Russian dude. Yeah, maybe it was a Russian dude. Eyes off. But eyes off what? Eyes off... The EVO. Yes. E no, it's not. No. Mm. Wasn't it EVO? Mm. Anyway, um, what we're Bombshell. doing, what we're going to do now is, this is the recycled head unit that we found that should serve our purposes just fine. Um, it has a plug on it. Um, like a, someone's, you can see in here where someone's made their own adapter to go from an ISO plug, which you find in a lot of Japanese cars where it's like all the pins are in a standard position. These are really, really Wasn't handy. Wasn't that you, Martin? Isn't that your stereo? No. Oh, maybe. I don't know. Maybe I did that. It looks quality. It's got heat shrink and stuff, so maybe yep. it was. Um, the good news is... On here, you can see it says system remote control. Now, that is the trigger we were talking about that triggers the amps to turn on. So that's yep. what we're going to connect our random remote wire here that I've labeled. Um, we're going to connect that into remote system. The only other thing we're going to need from this, because we have amps, and to be honest, this is the way to do it. Like, you want to put amplifiers in and, and run, like, proper power to everything rather than trying to run them off the head unit. So all we're going to need on this particular plug is our remote. We're going to have to fire up the head unit with some constant power, which is usually yellow. And then the red one will be the trigger that's triggered off the ignition. And then it also needs an earth. Every other wire here, we can just forget. We don't need it. Um, so we can chop them off. And what, So is the, the whole stereo, we're just going to run off RCAs? Yeah, four wires and then the RCAs. Now, the good thing about this stereo, and one of the reasons we chose it out of a bucket of old stereos, is that it's got six RCAs. So you can do 
front, rear, and sub. And the good thing is, like you were talking about your crossovers earlier, you can actually do the crossing over inside the stereo. Oh, that's cool. Whereas a stereo that came out of this only had two RCAs, and then you've got to do it in the amps, which is not always as good, and you can't adjust it from up here. Yeah, exactly. When you've got a seat on there, it sort of takes all the fun out of it. So we'll, we'll, we will. Um, dude, it's got a mic. You can, we can Bluetooth on this with your phone. Amazing. It's so good for when you're calling people to go cruising. Uh, so we're going to plug all this in. I'll just We just have to buzz out this wiring and work out what works and what doesn't, being that there is a plug here. Um, these plugs look the same, but they're always a little bit different. Yeah. This is probably Kenwood by looking at it, uh, but the actual Pioneer one, I'll see if I can pull this out and show you. They're always just slightly different. Like It's like the same plug, but they won't cross over. They don't talk. No, which is just why... Just like our fuel pumps. That's right, which is why you often end up with these ISO connectors, which are pretty handy, but useless in this case because we're not using any of the factory car stuff, as you can see here. That's What's all. amazing, Martin, and unlike the other videos that I've made about this car so far, is that in all of those videos, I'm like going, hey, at the end of this video, the car's going to start, and then we find something's broken or something doesn't work. But this time, Martin, <laughs> this video that you're <laughs> actually watching, no, no, they, they're going to see it. This video you're actually watching, the stereo is actually going to be working and you're going to hear what show car sound quality is like because it'll blow your ear holes about 14 galaxies south. You would have never experienced anything like it and you'll all just be slipping over in the earwax that's burst out of various orifices of your body um, to the sounds Fair enough. of Twisted. Maybe we should bring the show car scene back. I think it's coming back, man. Since your video came out, I've seen so many show cars like pictures of show cars that have been in barns it's literally the era of the barn fine show car yeah this is this is the era that is upon us like it or not it's happening but the thing is now there's been such a trend for functional cars like that's been the thing for ages like well, everyone driving if your golf, car doesn't they? function properly then what's the use of having it um, but yeah, these days you can get a WRX or a Golf or an Evo and they're just fast and they just work. And, and like we were saying, with a Focus RS, people don't need to modify them That's anymore. right. And with a sub, this factory stereo is probably basically as good as what you've got here. Yeah. After spending, you know, tens of thousands of dollars. No, this will this will be louder and better and sonically more full of Dude, we should, we should compare this to like, I mean, what's a good, like, I'm, I'm no doubt Golfs have good stereos. I reckon, w, oh, WRX stereos are pretty rubbish, aren't they? Yeah, they're not amazing. But I reckon like Euro ones would be pretty like an good. Audi something? Audis must have good stereos. We should have a sound people off pay the, too much for them. Sound off for them. Sound Audi. off, but this is just going to dominate, mate. No, it's just going to dominate. No, it will. I don't think it will. Because if Twisted's not going to dominate like basically any sound off that this city can throw at it. I have a feeling it's going to get chopped so bad in a sound off. Did you put a heat shrink on there already? Yeah, I did. Oh man, careful of the interior. That makes me nervous. Can you hand that to me? I don't want that sitting up there, I reckon my snake skin. There you go, bit of heat shrink on there. Full Pro Fesh, Doran would be proud. Look at that. I'm absolutely certain this is not Doran Pro Audio um, standard fare. I think this has been, like I said, had so many stereos through it. The car's had it's a lot of owners, history. man. It's since so since I think owners. the uh, original owner was saying he sold it like eight years ago or something. Yeah. And so it's gone through a lot of people and a lot of people have gone through it. All right, so that head unit's looking pretty good. Um, track down all those original factory wires and we're just using the stuff that for some reason the last area that was in here didn't use, but it's perfectly fit for purpose. Um, all that's left to do here is to plug in these RCAs. Um, that go into the amp, but before we can do that or before we can power anything up, we actually need power because we have no idea where it goes. It's a bit of a mystery because at the back you've got all these earth wires that are dangling down, but there's, there's just no power source to anything. So I can only assume it used to exist outside the car and now it doesn't. And that's where Martin, AKA the Bowbird, comes in with all of his leftover bits and pieces. So basically what we're gonna do before we run anything inside the car is just, um, I mean, look at this man, like this, this is not pretty, but that's actually going to work. So I'm just going to put that on there for now. It's already got ground because it's already attached to the car somewhere. We run some power to it. Then we can see whether that amp fires up. Then we can make sure that the head unit is sending signal to that. Then the front speaker should actually work. And then from there, we basically do the same thing to the subs, make sure that works, everything working, rerun the wiring. And our show car is one step closer to being returned to the absolute brilliance that is twisted the best car we've ever had on this show except for too sexy and the mini and super grand from the 240 and mod max and the cresta and the mirror and any others
Yeah, plenty of others, but they're the ones on the top of my head. Maximum class and snazziness. Okay, we got our big crimpers out to do it all properly. See over here. Yeah, we're gonna like do some mad lug installation, which is so satisfying. Oh look, maximum. Anyway, we're gonna do some crimping, um, but we don't need to because of my bower birdingness. This this wire could be from the sex spec era, man. This might have been in my first Gemini. I like to recycle. Did you just see stuff. the album over there? Maximum plastic surgery. Yeah, I saw that. All right, so. That wire's now live, so be careful what you yeah, do with so, it. Yeah, um, so I'm actually going to unplug the negative terminal of the battery like we're meant to. Yeah, it's not a bad because idea. Because I know we didn't, but now we will. Um, and once that's done, then we connect that end up to the amp. Is that 11 or 13? 13. 13 mil? Why? Because Bunnings, that's why. Oh no, because that's like Imperial, probably. So take that off because otherwise our positive is live. So we might connect we that up first. Okay. And then put it all back together. Cool. She's off? Yep, that's done. So now I just need a Phillips head. Yep. And we're going to replace this big blue one down here. But what's the other ones going to it as well? Um, Why is there so many wires going to it? I reckon someone's run their um, all the downlights and stuff off that main power feed. Yeah, okay. Yep, I reckon. Because that's the only thing I can make sense of. Because uh, the other amps and stuff don't require it. Um, but that's just, a, it's a bit of a cheater's way to get power, like clean battery power into the car and then out into your other stuff. We can do a continuity test to make sure that is actually getting the chassis, but I'm almost certain that it is based on all the random bits of wiring that's sort of hanging around down there. Well, that's going to split this in half. Yep. And jam it on. So now if we plug our battery back in, um, we should see 12 volts between those two terminals on our multimeter. There we go, Turn it to volts. All right, so I'll just uh, attach that again. Just touch the battery terminal on, I'll just make sure it's actually got power. Yep, no worries. With this, they can go away. One in the GND. All right, battery is going oh, this on is really now. really hard to do one-handed. This is really hard to do one-handed. That's connected again. And then positive on. Yeah, but I've got to be really careful with that one because that will shock stuff. Nope. Man, this is almost impossible to do one handed. Can you help me? Yeah. Can you hold? <laughs> I'll just hold this. Thanks, man. Testing the ground and the 12 volt and boom! That amp, dude, if we turn this on, that amp should power up. Should we see what happens? Yep. Wait, wait, wait. Oh, that key beep. Who else has a key beep? I don't have a key beep in my car. Is there a power light on this? Uh, it, should, it should turn on. Yep. Uh, maybe on the other side, where the RCAs are. Is there a LED on that side? Nothing that's working. Oh, yeah, there is a power LED. All right, here we go. So I'm going to, if when I turn this on, the head unit should Wait. tell the amp to turn on. Yep, all right, let's have a look. Here we go. One, two, three, go. Anything? No. Nah. Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Don't lose faith. How about now? Yeah. Oh my god, did it work? Oh no, did our protect- Yes! The tower! There's power! Sorry, I was very excited. That was pretty extreme. Our amp's powered, so now we have to just send an audio signal down it. Yes. Um, or, or we could plug everything in and just test it all in one go right at the end. Man, I know, we can do this live. Should we just test the front speakers and make sure they work or just put all our chips on the table and just go and do the rest of it and test it all at once? That pole that you can't see now is what's letting you decide. I reckon we just go all in. We're going to just plug our sub in the just, same way? Let's just, let's just do the rest and then we'll test it. We've just got to plug out. the sub in the exact same way we plug this in and then just crank it up, man. Perfect. And then, all, then literally all you have to do is hide that wire inside the car. Perfect. Finished. Let's do it. All right, so I'm going to rewire up this amp. Yep. Hopefully everything we need is here. RCA's in. I can't believe we're about to have a car that actually has a working show car stereo in it. Show car stereo, man. Like, like this would have been... Do you remember that doofy noise you used to hear from in auto salon? Like the bo 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 Yes. It turned into this massive like wash of noise. Yep, I do remember that. So for our power wire for our sub, because we've got no power running to the back that we can see, this is like a 
super cheap auto um, amp wiring kit, yeah. which comes with all the RCAs and stuff that's already in there, but what it does have that we need is a really long power cable. Yeah. So we'll do the same thing and run it down the outside of the car, make sure it works, and then we can like just jam it inside the car to actually use it on the road. Yeah, awesome, man. Or the racetrack, depends how you like to use your stereo. Um, but yeah, we need that big gauged, eight gauge I think that is, which some people would argue is not big enough for a show car, man. You need like zero gauge. Because the gauge goes backwards, it's a bit confusing. Like two gauge is bigger than something other gauge and then another gauge is different to another gauge. Yeah, right. That's like the technical term for it, I believe. I had a 15 inch sub for a while, that was crap. Yeah, they're, this just, is they're, some... they're so woolly, aren't they? So old, also the, the shape of these, like not being round is Yeah, that is, is a bit weird. I'm sure there's some science to that or there's not. So that's bridged. And now we just got to get an, a ground wire, earth wire, which there's one in there, definitely going to the car, but this we need to run from the that, battery. Go like that. I'll give you that end. Straight you can take that roof, down man. the front. Please hold. Are we going to make it? Are we going to make it? You got up that end? Bzz, bzz, bzz. This will need a lug on it, dude. We finally get it. Oh no, we just need a normal lug. We don't actually need anything fancy at all. Oh. We oh, will well. put a lug thing on that. And I will pull the negative terminal off the battery. Boom. Let's get a lug thing for this from somewhere. You like where it says, terminals. Marty, I'm only gonna assume that the black cable in the back here is negative, even though actually you think it's red, don't you? From what I can tell. No, that's power. No, it's not. From what I can tell, everything down there is is grounded. Like, but, but I'm why is there a there. ground, dude? There's a ground coming from each side. I know. I'm gonna, I'm gonna show the people because I don't. I think what we have is like the subs have not worked, while the stereo has been. Like, look, look at this. There is. Here's this big doodle hanging down here, right? That's yes. obviously meant to go on a battery. Now everything is connected to that except maybe this one. So all I can think is that's the negative terminal because if you look, you've got this thing under there as well. Yeah, just try and focus on it. They've got that and then another one bolted to the car. Now that makes total sense from an earthing point of view. This one potentially could be power. Dude, it would be because the distance between them yep. is similar to the distance between the terminals on a battery, isn't it? Yeah, it's close enough. So what we can do, if we get, grab the multimeter and buzz that one out. Yeah. And then we can also just, if we want, we can hook our battery wire up to that. Because that's what will run through the car eventually, right? Yeah, that's like true. Like after we've tested everything. We can buzz this one out here. Oh, there you go. So that's ground, as we thought. Yep. This one here, that we think's power, is I not reckon beeping. is going to be that other one that was hanging next to that, which I reckon is going to be this one. Try it, man. Hey. Automotive yeah. stereo archaeology. Cool. So we know that that one would have been power if there was a battery under the car. This one is ground no matter what because it's connected to the car. So as you'd said in the first place, Martin, and are uh, absolutely correct, we connect this, you put a lug on the other end of that and put it, connect it to the positive terminal of the battery, yep. this one plugs in, yep. and then as long as these are actually going to the subs and they work, then our subs should be working. I'm pretty damn excited, man. So that Fire out. can get onto there. What can get what onto where? Oh, you're going to connect it down that way instead. I guess that makes sense because we don't need to get into the boot again. Squish it down, man. That's the keystone of our <sighs> panty dropping technology. Of our subs. Your pants will literally drop off. You reckon? As we turn this on, your pants will just explode. Man, that would be so convenient if you needed to do a wee, wouldn't it? Yeah. Or like a... In all sorts of things. Excitement wee. So, I reckon, look at this dude. It's going both directions. Yes. It's not like the band. Yeah. It's It's... There you go. Oh, it's both directions instead of just one. What, are you, what have you given me here? What? Oh, sorry. Did you steal um, the, the usable spanner? Yeah. The 10 mil, it's always the 10 mil. Here you go, mate. Thanks, man. So this should power up our subs, but we're going to connect it into the wire that's dangling under the car, as you do, um, which should hopefully give us the sub subness that we need. We can just probably run this power wire like straight under the car, over the rear diff, through the transfer case, wrap it around the drive shaft, put it over the exhaust. Great idea. And it'll be flawless. There we go, dude. That's Look at that. Jobs. That should be now. Um, we connect this We can end. drive like this. I don't trip over it. Like this, look, over the, over the mirror, over the back, and now I will go and... 
crimp that onto the wire that's already there. We crimp there. that onto that one. Then our sub will have power. And then, everybody, the, the, the pension optional at moment. Pension optional moment. That you've all been waiting for is, a, is about to come upon you. It is upon us. And that is that you're about to hear twisted after all these years left dormant like the Ark of the Covenant from Raiders of the Lost Ark. Your face is going to melt off, damn it, once you hear what this car is capable of. Prepare uh for pants to drop. Put your hands up, pull your pants down. Face melting, base coming from the back of Twisted. <laughs> Gonna recycle some of the old tape. There you go, it's still auto salon spec. Yeah, let's just test that we've got power before we do the head unit business. Yep. So if you stick the negative terminal back on, it's gonna go kabam. Three, two, one. Yep. Boom. Yep, 13 volts. Dude, good to go. Healthy battery too. So, um, this is it. This is it, everyone. We're we gonna do this. Yeah, let's do it. Well, we've got to, you. I've got something in my pocket. There's for one. You, one slight issue is that the um, the camera's actually on the head unit. I don't know how that happened. No, that's the we old need one. this. No, this is a new one. Dude. Oh, is it? Although. Because we don't have a CD, what we do have is we've got a song uh, on this USB stick that we basically is the only song that we'll ever need to be in this car. So there's only one st uh, song on that stick, so that stick is going in, and then, actually I'm just gonna hot glue, I'm gonna hot glue going in there, man. Oh, yeah? yeah, I mean, for now, I'm just gonna tape it, because I'm not gonna have everyone waiting for that long, but just to prove <laughs> that this is all we need. But afterwards, I'm just gonna wrap it up and just hot glue gun it in there, so that, no, and I'll glue even the CD slot closed, I'll just glue everything closed, because nothing else <laughs> will ever go through this car again. Yeah. Um, here it is, Martin. You're the wiring guru, so you take it and do the honours. Let's hope our, hope our USB stick works. Oh, that's um, not ideal because if you open the door, then you break the sub power wire. This is, this is bench testing at its finest, though. Subs, bro. So that goes in here. SW for subwoofer. And this is the front which can go in F Freddy. And dude, that, that, so now you've got your USB stick in. If we, if we crank that up, now we should have subs. Man, Auto Salon would be so quiet right now. <laughs> Oh my god, it's, it's awesome, dude! So there it is, everybody. That is the, the resurrection of the stereo of Twisted. And um, this is a good bit here. It's about so to get good, basic. Man. Yeah, I think it's on fire, man. Can you turn that off and grab, grab yeah, the Yeah, 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 hang on, hang on. Over there? 